<laughs> so I just dropped in to Larkin here, my Kubota dealer, and I just had to go back in and show you folks this. I've never seen this type of tractor before. As you can see, things are shaping up with the supply chain. Lots of excavators out there, a lot of new tractors and summer equipment coming in now in stock. But this, I had never seen before. I was talking to Steve, he said, this is an old model tractor that's still super popular. It's a B26, it's called. Big commercial use type tractor. Not like my old B2601 at all. Sits much higher, massive frame. I want to show you folks the frame on this thing. On the loader, it's 25 horse, no mid PTO or anything. It's a commercial grade type tractor. Even though it's got the B26 at the beginning, it's not like my B2601. Get a load of the struts on this loader. That's my hint. Anyways, he said it's a real workhorse, primarily for commercial type applications. Lifts about 1,200 pounds. I assume that's up. Big bucket on it, heavy duty bucket. You can tell with the lip on the front or the blade on the front. And look at the reinforcements on that loader. Loader on it is massive. Again, here's my hand. Whole lot bigger than my 2610, that's for sure. He's decked out pretty good. And it's equipped with the backhoe, which also comes off the back. You've still got a three point hitch on there, but they've got it all decked out with all the toys and accessories. Huge seller still to this day. First time I've seen one though. Time to rock and roll. Let's head north. What a gorgeous day. Hey, I want to congratulate a few of you. I've spoken to three of you good folks this week. Two of you just got delivery of your 2610 and one of you super excited because it's coming this weekend, which is why I'm doing this video today. GP, my tractor's here and I understand I'm supposed to have some kind of ballast or counterweight or counterbalance on the back of the tractor. I kind of get that. Not sure what it is and why, but more importantly, how much weight am I supposed to put on the back of the tractor? Well, I can say this about that. Yes, 100%, you absolutely have to put something on the back three point hitch to offset anything you wanna do with this loader, especially on these subcompact and compact tractor models. And I'm not just talking about filling your rear tires with fluid. That, in my humble opinion, is also necessity on these smaller tractors. And two, how much weight should you throw on that three point hitch? That's a question I cannot answer for you. But what I will do today is I'm gonna tell you how I figure out how much weight to put on it. I'm not saying I'm right, but I'll tell you what I've been doing for the last six years. Before we go any further, please remember if you're new to the channel, I am not an expert on tractors. However, in the description of this video, I am gonna give you a link to three different YouTube videos. And over the years, these are the three most informative or best videos that I've ever found that discuss the need or the effect of having balance or counterweight or counterbalance on the back of your tractor and why it's so important to have it. They're in the description of this video. Ballast, counterweight, and counterbalance are kind of interchangeably used terms in the industry. I'm not sure technically which one is the accurate term, but when you hear any one of those terms, they all are basically referring to weight being applied to your three-point hitch. So hey, it wouldn't be me if I didn't start by telling you a story. And I know you're gonna say, GP, I don't have time to listen to a big story. I'll try to make it short, I promise, but it's important. In October of 2017, I got the very first tractor I'd ever owned or operated. It was a Kubota B2601, as many of you know that have followed the channel. I was a little worried about it, I'd never owned a tractor, I read the manual, played around, toyed around with it a bit, but I'd also just gotten my annual load of maintenance gravel. And as you folks know over the years, my friend Keith comes in with a dump truck, he dumps me seven yards of gravel, and I use it throughout the summer months to maintain my mile-long driveway. This year was important because I had the tractor with a bucket and a loader, and I was trying to build up the back of the shed. This area that you see graveled, you may recall, used to be forest right up to the back of my cabin. I'm doing my best to bucket this gravel and spread it over in that area you just saw. 
The B2601 is literally almost flipping over on its side. The butt end of the tractor keeps coming up off the ground, and I have no idea why. I eventually shut it off and I call my dealer. I tell him there's something broken on the tractor, because I'm literally that naive and that ignorant of how a tractor works. Every time I come across this part of the slope to spread gravel, I feel that my butt, my bum, starts to feel light, like it's being lifted. And that's because it was. And I look down and one, usually the right rear tire, is literally coming off the ground and the tractor is tilting over. And to cut a long story short, for the first time I learned about the importance of ballast. Filling your rear tires is also really important. But however, the weight is on your rear axle, not behind your rear axle. I've got rim guard in this. I had rim guard in the B2601. That rim guard is about 10 to 11 pounds per gallon. The B2601 had an additional 187 pounds per tire in the rear, which gave me lots of extra weight on the rear axle. On this LX2610, there's 257 pounds of rim guard in each rear tire. That's a substantial amount of weight added to the rear axle, but not behind the tractor to offset the weight that you throw into the bucket or your pallet forks or your grapple out the front of the loader arms. What I also learned over the last couple of years, which you'll see Neil Messix will go through in one of those links I put in the description, is that the weight rating of your front axle is in fact far less than the amount of weight you can put on this loader. True. So ballast plays kind of a secondary role because if you don't have enough counterbalance or weight in the back of the tractor to offset all of the weight you're throwing on your pallet forks or your bucket, you're now applying more weight to this front axle, which in some cases is going to exceed the weight rating. And I understand that's a bad thing. He explains it better in his video. Let me explain how I determine how much weight is on the back of that tractor. I use kind of a very simple method, which may or may not be correct, because I think there are times when I wish I had more weight on the back of that three point. But generally speaking, I base the weight on what I think I'm going to be doing that day or what I'm going to be lifting that day. When you watch my videos, the weight on the back and what you see me lifting in the grapple or the box of the pallet forks is not random. It's actually thought out. And here's how I do it. I know that this loader and that bucket weighs somewhere around 550 pounds. I'm pretty sure that's what it says in the manual. I also know that I've thrown over 500 pounds of rim guard in the rear tires. So in essence, generally speaking, I kind of have a reasonably well-balanced, stable tractor without anything in the bucket or anything on the back. Now I'm gonna put things in the bucket or I'm gonna add a grapple and I'm gonna go into the forest or I'm gonna dig up rocks or I'm gonna bucket gravel today. So I know if I'm gonna be lifting 500 pounds, I try to make sure I have at least 500 pounds or more on the back of the tractor. You might think that's wrong and maybe it is wrong, but in my mind, you've got this teeter-totter effect. You throw 500 pounds out the front of the tractor and you start to lift, this tractor is going to need some kind of a counterbalance. And although it may not be mathematically correct or you know, using physics equations correct. I kind of figure that if I throw 500 pounds on the back, I've got 500 pounds in the tires, I should be okay. GP, how do you know how much weight you're gonna lift today? Well, I do know, because we're very fortunate to have access to the internet today. And any amount of weight you wanna to try to calculate is easily accessible on the internet. True. If you're lifting logs, I know that generally speaking, 90% or more of the wood that we pull out of the forest is either maple or ash. Silver maple to be exact, I believe. We, I know that we cut them in eight foot lengths, as you guys know, because that's what seems to work for us on the trails. And so I go on the internet and there are numerous calculators, wood calculators available from different forestry organizations, good reputable places, and they'll have a free calculator. You type in, calculate the weight of maple log and you'll come up with a bunch of stuff and somewhere in there, there'll be a calculator. You click on it, it'll ask you the diameter of the log, the length of the log, and the species of wood. And when you click calculate, it will tell you what the weight of that log should be when it's wet or green and when it's dry. Gravel, it's no different. Go on the internet and you just Google, how much does my gravel weigh? And you'll see, once again, a whole bunch of different quarries or stone retailers will have a free calculator. It'll ask you the type of gravel or stone or aggregate or material, including dirt and soil and other things. You type in how many cubic feet or how many cubic meters you have. 
and it, you click calculate and it will tell you how much it weighs. That's how I know that a bucket full of that gravel weighs about 425 pounds. You'll find a chart in your loader manual and it will tell you how many cubic feet of material this bucket will hold when it's level as well as when it's heaped. That's how you know how much you're bucketing. All these big boulders you see me digging out of the ground over the last few years while I do maintenance on the property, very simple. Went on the internet. I sized out a two by two foot boulder granite, how much it weighs. I also sized out, I believe, a three by three rock made of sedimentary stone. So I have an idea based on what I see, how much weight roughly I'm gonna be lifting. When you good folks watch me grappling logs out of the forest, it's not random, my friends. I've Googled that a 12 inch, eight foot long maple log weighs approximately 420 pounds. I also know that an eight inch ash log at eight feet weighs about 180 pounds. So when you see me moving logs around with the grapple and I'm not just picking them up and I'm moving over here and then I'll grab one, sometimes I'll grab two or three over here or I'll take the grapple and I'll drag logs together. It's because I'm thinking in my head, how much weight is there and how much can I lift? based on how much weight I put on the back of the tractor. And quite often, I'll pull up to a log, like you guys remember that big 24 inch oak? I'll size it up, and usually off camera, I'll beep the horn, I'll make a hand signal to either Husky Bob or Guy, and they'll come up and they'll bucket in half for me before I lift it. And hey, that's not to say over the years, I haven't tried on occasion to lift something super heavy with that tractor, knowing that I may not have enough ballast. But I do that usually deliberately. Usually Guy or Husky Bob's with me. We size it up and the purpose of it is just to see the type of capacities or whether or not that LX2610 can lift it or before the B2601. And yeah, I've done it a few times. I don't recommend it, but I have done it. You may notice over the years that quite often, especially if I'm doing work that I'm not in the forest and I don't need to bring chainsaws, I often will use my box blade. And you'll see, I often have chains thrown or draped across the box blade. It's because I know my box blade weighs 450 pounds. I know this quick hitch weighs 75 pounds. And I know that these 20 foot lengths of chain weigh somewhere around 40 or 50 pounds each. It's how I add weight. The big tool rack. She's 300 pounds dry. I dump my chainsaws, my fluids, my bar oil, all those good things in there. But I know that I've got 300 pounds of tool rack. I have a 75 pound quick hitch. And you folks have probably noticed in the back of it, in addition to my chain, spare chains, my chain locker, all those things, I always take my winter chains off of the rear tires in the spring, fall, and the summer when I don't need them. And I throw them in the back because each chain weighs 82 pounds each. It's another 165 pounds. 75 for the quick hitch, 300 for the big tool rack. And if I need more weight, I add more things in, more chains, whatever it is I do have to weigh it down based on what it is I think I'm gonna be doing that day to try to counterbalance what I'm lifting in the front of the tractor. The other feature of this big tool rack is that it has a bar in the back on the hitch to add suitcase weights. You can add a lot of them on either side, I think four or five on each side, if you need to add more weight to the back of your tractor. And similarly, as you folks know, if we're going back and we're going to be bucking rounds and I need somewhere to load it, I take the old carryall that Guy and I built. This thing for sure weighs a couple hundred pounds on its own, but it also holds an entire face cord of firewood, which weighs a lot. So when I'm heading out into the forest, you might notice not only do I like to put my chainsaws and things in the back, but I throw chains, things that are heavy in the back. And as soon as we start bucking wood, you probably may not have noticed because it's kind of subtle, I start throwing buck logs into the back because I need the weight when I'm using the grapple. And especially my friends, if the primary purpose you use that tractor for is work in the forest where the ground is not even anywhere, you've got a lot of mulchy, soft ground, you're going over stumps, rocks, those kind of things, which are causing the tractor to constantly teeter. It just makes it that much more important to ensure that you have weight on the back to maintain stability. So, hey, I'm not saying I'm right, it seems to work for me. I certainly know when it doesn't because as soon as I start to feel that light feeling in my butt, I know the tractor is not properly balanced. And if you haven't yet felt that, it feels the same as when you're on a roller coaster, you get to the top and you start to fall in the roller coaster. You get that feeling of weightlessness right here in kind of your middle region. <laughs> That's what it feels like. 
So hey, I hope that was kind of helpful, especially to new folks. Again, it's just the way I do it. I'm not saying it's the right way. There's a lot of really well-experienced operators on this community. If any of you folks, you know, see some issues with what I've said today, or you've got some better ideas for how to determine how much ballast or counterbalance, please leave it in the comments. It's always welcome. And I hope you guys on this beautiful spring day are gonna be safe out there. Have a great week, enjoy your families, please be kind to each other, and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and be watching GP Outdoors. Cheers. Wow, spring's back. Quick addendum to the video. If you are a new tractor owner, first time, I highly recommend that you go on the internet, find a forum called Orange Tractor Talks. It's a worldwide forum, open forum. It's free and it's for Kubota tractor owners. It was probably the most invaluable resource I had the first couple of years of owning my first tractor, the B2601. There are just an unlimited number of very well experienced tractor operators with decades of experience. No matter what question you have, Ask it on the forum and I promise you within minutes you'll start getting responses from people that know, people that have been there, people that can explain to you how to repair something, how to do your maintenance when you have a simple question, what this feature is on the tractor you can't figure it out, how to bucket gravel, why you need ballast, any type of question you have whatsoever, somebody will help you out. A lot of kind folks on that forum. It's free, you just go on, it takes 30 seconds to create your own free account and you can start talking to people. And you can also see a lot of reference material or threads that are already posted on the account that'll help you work through whatever question you have.